good morning, it's Father's Day, and or it's when Earth on Earth, in a, certainly in Australia, it's a day that we celebrate as Father's Day. And I want to talk about Father's Day in a, in a different sense, because I want uh, the Father to give you a gift, and this Father you might not know. But if we look at our earthly fathers, and when I woke in the early hours this morning, and I was reflecting on how sad it is for some people or some children or you know their father hasn't been kind to them in fact has been quite evil and and done some terrible things to them now you might be fortunate that you've got a a, a good father and that's fantastic if you have but let's talk about our earthly fathers and some of the evil stuff that they've done and it's important to understand that it's not totally their fault in a sense, now just bear with me in a little bit with this, because what happens is that in, in the spiritual realm, there's a kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of darkness inflicts its evilness on it. And the spiritual realm, in the spiritual realm, in the kingdom of darkness, they, they, they in, uh, inflict evil onto humanity through fathers and many other ways but in this case we're just talking about fathers and all, all of this story there's a really good news because i've got a gift for you and you're going to love it uh, that's if you want it because like all gifts you don't have to take them so if we have a look at the, this with the spiritual realm and and the kingdom of darkness jesus said in john 10 10 the thief comes to kill steal and destroy but i've come to give life and life abundantly and abund and that means an abundant life also in 1 John 5 19 now if you're not reading a bible these don't make sense but they're just different books of the bible that I'm talking out of and I just want to use that as the reference points here is that 1 John 5 19 says the whole world is under the control of the wicked one did you catch that the whole world is under the control or the sway of the wicked one the other thing is with it in a new living translation uh, and I'm going to read this 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 particular one because it's just a bit easier to read. In the book of Ephesians, in chapter two, verse two, it says it says this: the commander obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is at work. Sorry, he is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to to obey God. So the, unfortunately, the bottom line is for those that don't want to obey God, it just means that the kingdom of darkness and the enemy, Satan, is at the works in the hearts of, of, of people. So if you've got a father that's really done some really bad things, just understand there's spiritual implications of that. He's just being a pawn to that realm. But the good news is you have a heavenly father who loves to who loves you unconditionally uh, <laughs> he loves you unconditionally which really you know if you don't know god or haven't experienced the kingdom of, of god that doesn't make sense because you're mixing you can mix it up with the other the kingdom of darkness but but trust me in this because i've i've lived in both kingdoms so i know that the god the kingdom of God and the kingdom of light is a, is a God of love. He loves you unconditionally. And on Father's Day, I sense he wants to give you a gift. And that's what I'm talking about. So just stay with me and he's going to offer you a gift. You don't have to take it, but it's going to change your life if you take this gift. So um, let me just read this. And I'm reading out of, out of um, you know, some notes here. I just want to stay on track with it. And the good thing about him loving you unconditionally is when you make a mistake or sin, which just basically means making, you know, making mistakes or goofing up or disobeying, you know, divine laws. And, you know, the divine laws, they're not book of rules or anything like that. They're just love divine, divine laws to help you live the best possible life that you can, can have and not be under the influence of the evil one. And so... Um, you know, I've goofed up many times and, uh, and you know, he's, and the good thing is with it, in one of his verses, if you goof up and, and, and uh, you know, disobey one of his divine, uh, divine laws, if you goof up and say, oh, I'm really sorry, or, you know, and, uh, forgive me, you know, I've goofed, this is the promise in the book of Isaiah, for chapter, four, book, uh, chapter 43, verse 25. And God himself says this to you. I, yes, I alone 
will blot out your sins for my own sake and will never think of them again. Now, how good is that? And so if you ask God's forgiveness for, you know, goofing up or whatever you've done, he'll say, you're forgiven, and he never carries it again. Unlike human beings, you know, you ask someone, I'm sorry, can you forgive me or whatever? And most times they carry grudges and they won't, they won't forgive you. But God the Father, your heavenly Father, is not like that. He will just, yep, that's it. I'll remember the sin. What sin? I don't remember it anymore. Once you say, I'm sorry, I've goofed up. That's the nature of this person. The other thing is what uh, is about um, um, your heavenly father is he wants to be a father to the father, fatherless. So if you've had an earthly father that's abandoned you or not been there or has never shown you love or whatever, God's promise is, is that he wants to be a father to the fatherless. So let me show you what that means. Let me just grab this for you because I just want to show what his word says with that. So let's have a look at this. And it says in Psalm 68, 5, Sixty-eight five. Where are we? So sixty-eight five. It says a father. He he wants to be a father to the fatherless, uh, fatherless, a defender of the widows. In Psalm uh, ten verse fourteen b, he says, "You are he is a defender of orphans." So if you're an orphan in the sense that your dad has abandoned you and has deserted you, he wants to be your defender. He wants to look after you. In Psalm 10, 17, he says this. Psalm 10, 17, where are we? Sure, Lord, you know the hopes of the helpless. Surely you will hear their cries and comfort them. You'll bring justice to the orphans and the oppressed. So mere people can no, can no longer terrify them. How good a promise is that? And so also in Psalm 146, verse 9, it says that he cares for the orphans and the widows. That's your heavenly father. He'll care for you. Unlike what your, your, your earthly dad might have done to you, he just wants to love on you in ways that you've never ever experienced before and not only that he wants to give you a gift and that's what i'm going to come up to you and so this gift he has for you is the best gift you could possibly ever have and it's a life changing gift and it was a gift that he gave to me on the 23rd of may 1990 and it changed my life forever and it will change yours and the gift that he wants to give you is a way to come out of the kingdom of darkness and into his kingdom, the kingdom of light. And what it said, what it says with that, and it's really quite amazing, you know, with this gift that he wants to give you on Father's Day, because I sense the significance, it's Father's Day. Your earthly father wants to give you a gift. And, and the gift he wants to give you is his spirit, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth the one that will guide you to be your best. He will, and he will be your best friend on earth. In fact, he can be your spirit guide. He will be your comforter, your counselor, your helper. He will lead you and guide you. And I know that he's done that for me since 23rd of May, 1990. So the thing is with it is with this gift, this spirit guide, the spirit of truth that he wants to give you, how do you get this gift from your heavenly father? Well, it's really quite simple. It's simpler than actually than you really think it possible. And it will change your life forever. Trust me, I know. I just know from my own life. So let me have a look and read to you John 3, 1 to 7. And here's the keys for it. And this is what Jesus was saying. And I'll just read it out to you. And this is what, uh, this is what happened with uh, Jesus and a person called Nicodemus. So I'll read it. 
So there was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. And a Pharisee was just like, well, you can call it like a Roman Catholic or a, you know, Anglican minister or whatever you want to want to call it. It's just a terminology within the Jewish um, uh, culture and the Jewish religion. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus and, he, and Rabbi, he said, we all know Rabbi just means priest in the Jewish language. He said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. So that, at that stage, there was miracles happening and Jesus was really demonstrating the kingdom of God. And that's a story for another day. But, but this, I just want to understand how, how this gift, what he's alluding to. So Jesus replied and said this, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus, how can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? And that's a completely you know, re um, relevant question. This is another man when you look at it. And Jesus replied this, and this is what he said, and this is the key. I, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. So there's born again, and you may have heard the terminology, you may not have, but the born again means in the Greek, it's translated that it means born from above. So there's a spiritual birth. And when you enter into a spiritual birth, when you have a spiritual birth, your heavenly father gives you the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, your spirit God, your own personal spirit God, who will be your comforter, your counselor, your teacher, your advocate, your helper. He is an all encompass, all the attributes that you would want in someone to help you on earth, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, your spirit guide, you can have him as your own personal spirit guide. That's what the word says. And that's the promise to your father on Father's Day. And you can have that gift, as I said, if you want to have it. So let's have a look at something else. So, um, yes, so let's have a look at this verse. This is John 1, 12. And it says this in John 12. So um, basically is, is uh, how do you inherit the right to become a child of your heavenly father? And this is what it says in, in, in John 1, 12. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but with a birth that comes from God. So who is this him that this is talking about? Well, this him that he's talking about, or how do I get this gift? Let me just read this again. So how do I get this gift and who's him? And the him is Jesus. And so let me have a look at this and I'll show you something. I've read that. Oh, yes, there it is. So just bear with me. I just, I just want to follow me through with this because this is really just exciting. I know it's transformed my life when I accepted this gift and it can do the same for you. So the him is Jesus. And this is what it says in John 3.16. For God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. So most people, if you uh, think God's a big bad God and he's come to judge us and whatever, that's not the case at all. God has come to save you. And what's he actually saving you from? What he's saving you from is the kingdom of darkness. It's evil rulers who inflict bad stuff onto humans and through humans into others. And John 10.10 10 says, Jesus said, the thief comes to steal kill, and, steal, kill and destroy, but I've come to give life and life abundantly. 
So let me just show the, this verse. And it's really important to do that. He didn't come to judge you. He didn't come to pick you up with a, you know, hit you over with a big bad skill or a stick or whatever. That's religious. That's churchianity. That's not what the Bible teaches. And that's not what God's about. He wants to save you from the bad stuff that's happened. He wants to take you out of the kingdom of darkness and put you in his kingdom and become one of his heavenly kids. And so this is what it says here in this translation. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose, and this is Jesus talking, my purpose is to give them, and that's give you, a rich and satisfying life. And in here, there's an explanation that says, and it says, God's plan from the beginning was for man to be enriched and to have a prosperous, abundant life. Here, Jesus declares his intention to recover and restore to man what was the father, that's the heavenly father's intent, and to break and block the devil's intent to hinder us receiving it. So he, that's what Jesus come for. So Jesus come to give you a gift or be here on earth and died for us. And that's all, that's another story. And it, it may not make sense, just trust me with this. But the purpose was, was to give you a gift and help you get out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light and then be led in a life that you cannot possibly imagine how good it is and as what jesus says a rich and satisfying life so if you're not happy with your life now not happy with the world around you this is a way out of it this is the door out of it to get into a life that's rich and satisfying that you it's a, it, this gift is the best gift that you could possibly ever imagine and so how do you get this gift from God? And it really is so simple. It's ridiculously simple that you'd wonder why more people don't um, under, you know, embrace it. But it's important to understand that the God of this age, which is the devil, he wants to convince you that God's a bad person, etc. when in reality, he is, the, he is the evil one. He is the one that's inflicting on that. So... Then in Colossians 1.13, it says this, and what he wants to do and what Jesus can do is that for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. So what God is offering you through his son is the opportunity to rescue out of the kingdom of darkness and no longer have to live with all that garbage around you and transfer you into the kingdom of his dear son or the kingdom of light. So the next thing it says, and just like what they said, um, um, that's right. The first, that's right. The first gift that he wants to give you of all of his gifts is the Holy Spirit. And so let me have a look. Okay. So then let me just go. I just want to have a look. So then like what happened there, the question was asked by some people, which I'll go to, and they went, so what must we do? And you might be asking a question. I want this. I'm over this garbage that's happening in my life, et cetera, et cetera. And I want the freedom from all of this stuff. So you might be saying, what must we do? And it's a good question because this is what we must do. And it happens and it, and it says it in the book of Acts. So let me read this to you. So I'll find this. Um, it's 2.37. And so this is what happened because they just had that. These guys had just had a, an encounter with God and actually received the gift of the Holy Spirit and it just changed their lives totally. It's just an amazing book to read. The book of Acts it means nothing if you, if you don't know God, just like it was for me. But when you read it, it just, you just read about people's lives were transformed when they received this gift. It was just amazing. And they said, brothers, what should we do? And that, because they were just, like, wow, you know, what do we do? And so Peter replied to them and he said, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So then what it means, repent means to turn around and change a change of mind. And the sins, all that means is a disobedience to God's divine laws that we've broken the, you know, 
the laws or the rules. And I'm not talking rules, you know, a book of rules. I'm trying to say spiritual laws that help us live a fulfilling and, and satisfying life. You know, this is not a book of rules. This is a book of life when you understand it. And that's what he's saying. I want you to turn, you know, don't stay in the kingdom of darkness. Get out of that kingdom. Here's a way out. I've sent my son for you and he's died for you, died for you in your place. And I know that doesn't make sense, but just trust me with this. Is that, and I can share that at another time why Jesus came. But the bottom line of it is that is that if you if you turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, then you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. How good is that? He wants to give you this gift of the Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit, the person, your personal spirit guide that will just live with you, the spirit of truth, your comforter, your counselor, your advocate, your helper. All of the things like he's helping you, he'll talk to you and show you. He's the most amazing person that you could have in your life. I just know it from personal experience. It is fantastic. He leads me, he guides me, he encourages me. He edifies me and he shows me things. He teaches me the ways of how to live life and things to do and decisions to do. So let's have a look at this. So to get out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light and receive this, you need to pray a prayer. And let me show you this prayer. It's really quite simple. So let me just put that up there. So... Um, this prayer this prayer and i'm going to read it out to you and then you can decide if you want to read it but this is the way that you can get out of the under the control of the evil one and into the out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light and start to live a very different life than probably the one that you're living now and you know etc cetera, etc cetera. so this is what the this is the this is the prayer to say that you say to God and what happens when you do that you move out of the kingdom of 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 darkness into the kingdom of light it's that simple and from then in there's a spiritual birth takes place and then the and the spirit of God the Holy Spirit invades you and you become born again you're like you're born from above and the spirit of God of God himself lives in you what an amazing thing that it just defies logic for the human brain i know but trust me i've walked with over 30 years with the holy spirit and i had 42 years in the kingdom of darkness i would not swap it for a second it has just been so fulfilling this is the best gift apart from jesus dying on the cross this is the best gift that he could possibly give me and jesus dying on the cross was to enable me to have this gift which is the holy spirit and have it residing in me and walking with me that's just an astonishing thing so let me read this out and then i'll come back and we'll read it together if you if you want it so jesus i recognize that there is no way i can earn forgiveness for my sin i receive what you did for me on the cross of calvary i ask you to forgive all my sins and i receive you as my lord and savior today take over my life lord and I will follow you as you lead. I renounce my old way of life, the kingdom of darkness, and any sinful hold it had on me. I love you, Jesus. Lord, I love you, Lord. Oh, I love you, Lord Jesus. And on the authority of your word, I believe that I'm legally a member of your family and a resident of your kingdom. And I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord. So instead of having the kingdom of darkness and Satan as your Lord, because that's really what happens. You can have come into the kingdom of light and have Jesus as your Lord, or, you know, the kingdom of God and your heavenly father, the whole lot of relationship with, well, it's, it's um, a Christianese language. Sorry for that, but you can have God, the father, Jesus, the son and the Holy Spirit, all three on your side and all his angelic beings at, at your, at to, to protect you and guard you. Okay. So if you want to have this gift and receive this gift of the Holy Spirit, I will re I'll read it and you follow after me. So let's go. Jesus, I recognize there is no way I can earn forgiveness for my sins. I received for what I received what you did for me on the cross of Calvary. I ask you to forgive all my sins 
and I receive you as my Lord and Savior today. Take over my life, Lord. Take over my life, Lord, and I will follow you as I lead. I'm oh, sorry, and I will follow you as you lead. I renounce my old way of life. I renounce my old way of life, the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of darkness, and any sinful hold it had on me, and any sinful hold it had on me. Even though I don't know you, even though I don't know you yet, I love you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord Jesus. And on the authority of your word, and on the authority of your word, I believe, I believe that I am now legally, that I am now legally a member of your family, a member of your family, and a resident of your kingdom, and a resident of your kingdom. Jesus, I accept you now as my Lord and Saviour. Jesus, I accept you now as my Lord and Saviour. Now, if you pray that prayer and pray that sin sincerely, what, and I don't know because I'm not there with you, but that will transform your life forever because what's happened with that simple wording, you've actually recognised Jesus as your Lord and Saviour and, and you've, a legal transaction has taken place. And so... Um, Um, and in this, in and so I'll just read two things. Romans ten nine says this: If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. And then the other part is is that, as I just said, is that a, in the spiritual sense, a legal transaction has taken place when you ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. Now, some of that language might not make sense yet because i know when for me man i had a powerful encounter with god when i asked jesus into my life and the spirit of holy spirit descended upon me and enemy man i couldn't stop crying and and you know i but i just knew that i had an, i'd had an encounter with god and something had taken place in the spiritual realm and little did i understand those days what i understand understand now but the question that i said uh, to to the to the atmosphere afterwards is god i don't know why this man jesus died on the cross that's the stupidest thing i've ever heard in my life but i'm now on for you and i guess i'll find out and the journey began for me of finding out why jesus died on the cross and then building a relationship with the kingdom of light and understanding how to live life according to what he said right so so you know you know, with this, what's taking place when you've asked this question, let me just read these to you. And I have missed a couple of bits in here. So I know I haven't, I'm on track. So let's have a look at this. We've talked about the legal transaction. Then what we want to do is I want to show you something else. This was Jesus's promise to you when you accepted this. And I want to read John 14, 6. So let me just have a look. So John 14, 6 says, oh, it's actually, there's two here. So first of all, Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. So it's very important to understand don't believe all the claptrap about other religions or whatever getting to heaven. That is sheer nonsense. Just Let's just cut to the chase. That's sheer nonsense. Jesus himself is saying, the only way to get to God, to the heavenly father, is through me. Then he said, this is the promise now with this gift. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the son can bring glory to the father. Yes, ask anything in my name and I will do it. Now, I've got here. Yes, that's right. So asking that, sorry, I just digressed a bit. So, he, sorry, oh, look, I read the wrong verse. Look at this. And I will say, so, <laughs> listen to this. I read, I read, this is, this is the next part he was saying. And I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. 
He is the Holy Spirit. Let me just turn the page. Who leads into all truth. So there it is. So if you ask Jesus now for the gift, if you ask anything in my name, and here he's saying that, ask him and he'll say, oh, and I'll ask the Father and he will give you another helper, another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit. So now with a relationship with Jesus, Jesus, I want, I want the Holy Spirit. I want the Spirit of God inside me. And by confessing and asking him to be your Lord and Savior, it's a done deal. He's going to give you the Holy Spirit and, and, and he will become your spirit guide. How cool is that? The other part about it is the exciting part is, let me just find this. Um, if I can find the verse. Oh, there it is. Let me put that over. Um, page 179. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> there it is. I just wanted to, there was two verses I, I supposed to be reading out of here. So first of all, let me go back to John 14, 16, 17, so it flows. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, and the spirit of truth. So there's the first part. Here it is in the book of Joel 28, 29. It says this, and it shall come to pass afterwards, that this is God speaking, that I will pour out my spirit and all flesh, your sons and, and all flesh just means all human beings, if they want them. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And that's what I had this morning. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and my maid servants, I will pour, pour out my spirit in those days. That's the promise that he's got for you. That he's poured out his spirit. That's what he wants to do. He wants to give you the spirit. He wants you to have the Holy Spirit in there. He doesn't want to see all this garbage happening to you anymore. He doesn't want to see parents doing the things to his parents. That's not his design. That's not what he wants. And so he wants you to have the gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. So let's just take, let's just look at some of the things that have taken place in what we've said. And let's recap on it. And some of that, some of that I've already covered, but I just want to recap it in bullet point form. First of all, we're saying the, that prayer, you're born again. You're born from a spiritual air above. So not only have you, have you, you know, you had a physical birth when you're born, but now you've had a spiritual birth and the Holy Spirit now resides in you. The second part is that you transferred from the kingdom of darkness and the rule of it uh, into the kingdom of light and the, under the rule of, of the kingdom of light. The third component is, is that you've received the Holy Spirit, your spirit of truth. And that's the gift that he wants. That's the best gift he can give you. That's the gift that he wants to give you on Father's Day. So Father, Father's Day takes on a whole new meaning that now you've, not, you've got a heavenly father that won't let you down. He loves you unconditionally. And that knowledge or insights, whether you've got revelations yet, because I can tell you when the Holy Spirit enters you, you the, there's a warmth and stuff that happens. And out of this, you might even be crying uh, with it. And that's just, that's okay. Because that's just God's love, what the poor is love all over you. That's what happens. It's just this person, God, you got no idea just how good it is and have him on your side. It's absolutely fantastic. And also with the Holy Spirit, he's your best friend. He's your best friend on earth. And um, I've got a note here. Let me just have a look. Oh, that's right. I know what it is. Let me just explain this person that's just been introduced to you. So um, the word, the helper, Jesus said he would send you the helper. And he will guide you and lead you into all truth. For he'll not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Man of life, it's just, it's just, you have got no idea how good the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is for you. He'll warn you of things, of, of impending dangers, whatever. Just, it's amazing what he can do for you. 
So let me have a look at this helper. Is that it's in the in the Greek? It's called, and I'll just bear with me, para para kalo, para kalo, and it means call to one side. And the word signifies intercessor, which means he prays for you, comforter, helper, advocate, counselor. Um, in non-biblical literature, it has the technical meaning of someone who appears in court, in God's court in heaven, on your behalf. The Holy Spirit leads believers to a greater apprehension of biblical truth. In, in addition to general help and guidance, he gives us strength to endure the hostility of the world system. And man alive, when we look around at the world system now, it's under the kingdom of darkness in a way that we could possibly, couldn't possibly imagine. All right. So this is your next steps to have uh, is that a spiritual birth has taken place and it's, in essence, you're a spiritual baby. And so if you've never had any sort of background, church background, Christian background or God background or whatever, because that's where I was, is you know that you've had a real encounter with God, but you don't know where to start. Well, it's important to understand that is like a baby being birthed. Like if we look at a natural baby when it's born, you don't expect it to be up and running and do the things that adults do. That's just dumb. Well, it's the same with a spiritual baby. Is as a spiritual baby, you go, well, I know something's happened. I've been born, which, I, you know, yeah, born again. But how do I do? I'm in this new kingdom. How do I, how do I get my head around? How do I, where do I start? And that was my dilemma. When I became a, a, a new believer and a follower of Jesus and was born again. And so what happens is, yeah, is that something happens on the inside of you, and you'll be already feeling that if you've accepted, you know, what I've said and read that prayer, is that you have a desire to know the truth. So the first thing that you need to do is get a book of truth that will lead you into all things. So this is the best you need to buy a Bible. And this is the one that you need to buy, right? This one in here is called the NKJV, which is New King James Version, Spirit-Filled Life Bible. So the good one, thing about this Bible is it's not only just the Word of God. So just hold that up for a second, right? And you can get that. You just go online and start typing in New NKJV, Spirit-Filled Life Bible. And if you put on a Jack Hayford, Jack W. Hayford, Executive Editor, editor that will give it'll come up on amazon or other bookshops or in australia on kurong websites etc but that's the that's the one to get and let me explain why one of the challenges that i had when i first became a follower of jesus and was born again is it was a real you know where do i start with this bible it's a big book i had no clue of all the terminologies that i was just using earlier and i understand you you're the same way but that Bible there, and I went through many different versions before I finally found that one. But that one there has got a whole bunch of study notes in it. So you look at it and then you see study notes and explanations and a whole bunch of other stuff that explains the verses that it is. That's the first thing. So buy one of those straight away and get it. And also with that, if you do get it, read the book of John. The book of John. The, the, the Bible is made up of a whole bunch of books. I can't remember. Let me just tell you how many books are in the of the bible which most people don't even realize this stuff uh, where are we i'll tell you how many books of the bible um, where are we okay so in the bible there's what's termed as the new testament and the old testament the old testament is 39 books and the New Testament is 27 books. And the interesting thing is, this is the amazing part of our people who read the Bible and say, you know, it's man-made words or whatever. It's actually the Holy Spirit inspired mankind or men to write it. And the amazing part was those 39 books of the Old Testament were written by human writers inspired by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the one that you've just introduced into your life, over 1,500 years. Now, just think about that. 39 books written by different human writers, 
over a period of time of 1500 years. The devil doesn't want to tell you that. He doesn't want you to know any of this stuff. He just wants to keep you in the dark and just what he says in the word and in the Bible, it says the God of this age blinds the minds of the unbelievers. That's what he will want to do with you. So the amazing part is there's a continuous continuity of those of those books. And in the New Testament, which is after Jesus come and where I've been basically reading the verses out and it's how to live life, you know, life for us now. Those 27 books were written by various human authors, uh, writers over some. 50 years really quite amazing independent of each other it really is quite extraordinary in what it says so first thing you need to do as a spiritual baby is buy that buy that bible because that's what you need to do uh, to get start your journey the next thing is with it is that we wrote and you can see it above me growing deep and strong when i became a new christian and a follower of jesus I had no idea where to begin. And it was such a mismatch of things of what, you know, to try and learn or whatever. And as I said to you, I had an encounter with God, the spirit of God entered me, but where do I start? And really there's some funny stories and all that, but I'll share, I'll share them in a later time. But what happened? So we decided, myself and a co-author, we decided that we would write a course for brand new Christians. And that Bible I just showed you is the one that we used as the basis for it so if you go so and it actually took us six years and some thirty-five thousand hours to 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 write it to make sure it was written in a manner that someone brand new follower of jesus birthed with the holy spirit could go on a journey of understanding their war their new walk in the kingdom of light and so it 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 goes it goes over i'm not going to get complicated with it let me just not digress or get away from it. If you go to the website, Growing Deep and Strong, you'll see a whole bunch of information of there and how to buy this because we've really made it easy for you. Just let me unfold this book. This one is, um, let me just go to the start. This one I'll show you. This is what they look like, the books. Right now, coil like this so that they can take the punishment of your folding and reading them over. And we take you on a systematic approach. And this one here is the coach's manual called Laying the Foundation. And so this is about nine weeks. And so you study it in bits each week and go on a journey. So it's like, the, it explains, you know, the Bible, how to read it, the kingdom of uh, and the new life, the legal transaction that's taken place, the kingdom of darks that shows you the kingdom it used to live in. You know, and all the bad stuff that happens. It just shows you warts and all from a biblical point of view. It's clear as much, it's clear as clear when you look in there and see. It just it's not hidden. It just says the kingdom of darkness and what he does to human beings. It just shows you that. And then we teach you God the Father, how you know how he fits into the picture, why Jesus came, because you know, as I said, that was the dumbest thing I could ever find. You know, ever you know think why did he die? That was the dumbest thing I ever heard of. And so it explains how that happens, et cetera, and I know that you'll discover that. And then it also the Holy Spirit, which who we're just talking about, because all of those things I've been talking about and the gift that you've just received, it introduces to him and shows you who he is. And then we introduce you to the existence of angels because there's angels standing around you. From when time began, there was angels that God assigned to you to walk you through and guide you and protect you. How exciting is that? And then it just continues on. And there's another mo uh, module called A uh, Power of Godly Character, which shows you how the Bible is meant, you know, meant human beings to, to live, how your earthly father was supposed to look after you. And, you know, as I said, in most cases, he hasn't because he's just become a pawn of the devil and inflicted evil stuff on you. And most times when that's happened, it's because it happened to him. And so the cycle never, ever breaks. Uh, it never gets broken but this is the way that you can break the cycle and you can change it for you and you can ch help change it for others around you and you can change it for if you ever want to have children you can change it for their children so they live a great life so go to the website and that's what i was going to show you uh, let me see if i can share my screen because i thought i had this up so let me just see there it is 
So let me share, see if I can share my screen. I think it tells me here I can share the screen. So let's have a look. Yep. There it is. So share. So hopefully you can see my screen. So this is what the, yes, by the look of it, this is what the, the website looks like. And so I forgot there was one other thing that I wanted you to do. So the website is uh, growingdeepandstrong.com. It's got a whole bunch of stuff. But if you go to here, you will see there's one called The War is Real. And if you go to that page, and you can do this on a, um, a mobile phone as well. If you go to this, where are we? Where is it? Must be right at the top. Sorry. What happened there? Something has changed. All right. So, sorry, it's on the side of the page. So, let me just go. Where is this thing? Why? What has happened? Sorry. Ah, there it is. Sorry. It's called Behind the Scenes. So the first one there, that's right, behind the scenes. So behind the scenes has a video on it. You can go into YouTube and type in Growing Deep and Strong as well. And if you go into Growing Deep and Strong, you'll come up our YouTube channel and we'll show you this because that's where it's stored. But otherwise you can go into Growing Deep and Strong forward slash behind the scenes evangelism. And then this video, the video goes for about 18 minutes but it does a recap on what we've just talked about. But more importantly, it shows you the two kingdoms, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness, how they're opposed to each other. And it'll show you, it'll show you that. And then it also covers, you know, the things that we've talked about before. And so that's the starting point is to go and, uh, and do that. The other thing is with it on the shop page, you will find all the materials that you can buy them. So there's called the Disciples Basic Course or the Coaches Basic Course. And these are in Australian dollars. So it's, um, uh, what is it, 16, 16 weeks, I think it is. 16 weeks? I think it's 16 weeks. in Yeah, 16 or 17 weeks in total. So, it's, so there's two. There's the Coaches Manual or the Basic Course. Now, there's, out of this, there's two things that take place. In the Coaches one, that's been designed to teach others. But even a brand new believer, you can actually use that and teach others if you had management or leadership skills and done that. But, and it's already, it's all filled out for you that you can teach others or an experienced Christian can teach others. The, the disciples basic course is fill-ins and you've got to fill it in using that Bible that I talked about. Um, um, and I'm not quite sure which way to go here because I don't know who who I'm talking to, etc. on that. So you can do a choice of two things is that you can buy the coaches one. It's got everything in it that you need to learn, and et cetera, et cetera. Or you can buy the disciples one and then contact our office and just email our office. And then, uh, and you know, there's a contact oh, point to it. There's a contact up the, up the top here. You can contact us and then we can put you in, tub, in, in touch with someone that, can, that could be close to you or could do it on a Zoom meeting and walk you through and teach you, teach you on how to do it. So two things, uh, I recommend either buy the coaches one and that you can use that to teach yourself and, and then teach others, or you can get this one, the Disciples Basic Course, and then contact, order it, and then contact the office, and we'll put you in touch with someone that will teach you how to use that, okay? So let me come back to there. Okay, so Father's Day. I hope that you embraced it and accepted the gift that your Heavenly Father wanted to uh, give you. It will transform your life. And I trust that this has blessed you and I look forward to catching up with you at some stage. You can email us on the email, talk to us or whatever, and God bless you. Have a great day. And I trust that you will enjoy your walk with the Holy Spirit, just like I have for the last 30 years. Catch ya. Bye. God bless.